Welcome to Stuff's Cup Wrap on probably the most decisive day in the Pryder Cup series in the Round Robins with Ineos through to the Cup Final. Pretty interesting day, uh, maybe one of the best days racing that we've had, Duncan, after, after a few frustrations. Yeah, a, 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 sort of a lot of uh, toing and froing with wind shifts causing delays and starts, but once it got underway, what a race. This was undoubtedly the race of the Round Robins. Nine lead changes, um, bow to stern crosses, absolutely thrilling protests in there. Uh, the Italians gave up a 19 second lead with two legs to go, so they'll be kicking themselves really because throughout all this, Ineos now will get three weeks off to further develop and we saw what they did with that sort of time on either side of Christmas, mm. so they're really in the box seat now. Sir Ben Ainsley, what's, what's the overriding feeling? Relief, delight? I'm, I'm really pleased for the team actually because we've had a difficult build up to this competition as you know and for the team to get those results is just reward for a huge amount of effort that they put in over the last four, four weeks and before that but particularly the last four weeks to turn, turn the team around so all credit to them. Any surprise compared to where you were a few weeks ago? No, I think we knew that we had a competitive boat if we could get it somewhere near its optimum and we clearly were nowhere near its optimum in the Christmas regatta so it was trying to identify why and then rectify those issues and I wouldn't say we're at 100% but we're, we're getting a lot closer to that and a lot closer to where we need to be if we're going to keep progressing through this competition. The next three weeks, is it about big changes or is it about fine tuning what's there? Yeah, I don't think, sadly, I don't think we can expect to see the performance gains that we saw between the Christmas race and the Prada Cup. But we certainly know that there's a lot left on the table and we're going to need that if we're going to progress through the Prada Cup and, and into the Cup itself. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a race that could have got either way at any point. Um, but yeah, listening afterwards, um, Jimmy Spittle sounding pretty deflated and a little bit frustrated, of course, that one of his protests didn't happen. But um, yeah, they're not going to be happy. They've got a lot more work ahead of them than if they'd been able to win it and keep their final path alive. Yeah, well, uh, I think now, of course, you know, Luna Ross, as we say, have to go back to the, the drawing board. They had new foils out there today. They certainly had some good gas. It was a real drag race, really, right around the whole course. Francesco Bruni, how are you feeling about having to now go into the semi-finals on your path? It's exciting, more racing. <laughs> if we get more racing uh, like the racing we have just done today, it's going to be great, but uh, we have to... We have to just uh, change the result. <laughs> we have to lose by a little bit. Not uh, We have to win by a little bit, not lose by a little bit. When you look at what you might do differently in the semi-finals, are you sticking with the two helmsmen or might you review how that works? I think we're going to stick with that because there are many design uh, things correlated to it and uh, we can just uh, change it so easily. Um, so and there is not a lot of time to change things. I just, we, I think we just have to see where we uh, have uh, the biggest improvements to make, and uh, I think we can really gain a lot of meters just by doing things a little bit better. Does having to do the semis compromise your boat development? No, not really. I think uh, we we have done a big jump uh, in performance this this week. Uh, the boat was going a lot better today compared to last week, so uh, I think we are, we are very happy with the performance of the boat. They're going to face American Magic in the uh, semi-final ripper charge that starts on Friday. Of course, the Americans in a race against time of their own. They've got to get their boat really ready by Wednesday for me measurement after that dramatic capsize last Sunday. Heck of a lot of work going on there, 24-7. The, uh, the lamps are burning throughout the night at American Magic's uh, team base. Everything's on the line there for them. Uh, can they come back? Can they find the sort of speed they had before that capsize? Because they were absolutely ripping last Sunday before it all went upside down. Yeah, and the big win for Ineos, not just getting through to the final, they've now got almost a fortnight to work on their development, try and get the boat uh, going ahead. And you could see the delight in the team, Ben Ainsley, having to kind of calm the guys down after they, after they crossed the line. Yes, yeah, he, he certainly said, just calm down, guys. You know, we're into the final, but uh, that's one step in a, in a long journey. But really, the, uh, the past couple of weeks have been all about the British. I mean, it's uh, Arise Sir Ben, uh, Rule Britannia. I mean, they're 5-0, and oh, and they've had three wins against the challenge of a record. They've had two wins against American Magic. The, uh, the semi-final is a best-of-seven race affair, so they're going to need uh, first team to get four wins. And at the moment... 
Well, that's a bit of a coin toss, I'd say, between these two teams. And as we've seen in this regatta, every step of the way, an interesting twist and a new story. So more to come on Stuff's Cup Wrap.